Hello there, thanks for coming along to this um, YouTube session where I will be looking at introducing trigon um, trigonometry using a couple of graphs. It's a really nice way of introducing trigonometry and it, hopefully it will help you to see where all of these magic words like sine, cosine, tangent come from and what they actually, what they actually mean. Um, it's quite a complicated lesson and I delivered it earlier on Zoom and I think perhaps the YouTube format might be better because you can pause it, rewind it as and when you see fit. Having done the lesson, I'm also going to give a slightly longer intro as well into things like opposite side, adjacent side and the hypotenuse. I really do hope you find it useful. So you've, so when you studied Pythagoras, you will have familiarised yourselves with the term hypotenuse. That refers to the length of the, the longest side in the triangle. So in triangle ABC, the hypotenuse is the length AB. And that will always be opposite the right angle. So in triangle DEF, the hypotenuse is the length DF. Because again, it is opposite the right angle. GHI is a little confusing because it's the other way up. Don't be caught out, it's still opposite the right angle. Now in trigonometry, where we also study right angle triangles, it includes the, the, uh, um, one of the other two angles and looks at the relationship between the angle and two of the sides. So if on triangle DEF I labelled the angle here, the length DE would be the opposite side and the length EF would be the adjacent side. This changes though if we label the other angle. So if instead of having the angle DFE marked on, we had the angle EDF labelled. Let's put that one here. The opposite is now EF and the adjacent is now DE. So the opposite side is always opposite the angle that's labelled and the adjacent side is always next to or adjacent to the angle. So in triangle ABC, if we labelled the angle here at ABC, the angle ABC, the opposite is AC and the adjacent is BC. If on triangle GHI, we labelled the angle HGI. The opposite side is now HI and the adjacent is GH. We are going to use these graphs to investigate what happens to the opposite and the adjacent sides when we change the angle in the triangle. I'm going to construct our triangle or my triangles inside this circle. I've made my circle have a radius of four centimeters, but that represents unit length one. So for the purposes of this, the hypotenuse will always be one, one unit. I'm going to go round the circle, drawing triangles, changing the angle by 15 degrees each time. So my first triangle, I did an angle of 15 and I draw my triangle where the hypotenuse goes from the centre to the outside to the circumference of the circle. If I then draw a line vertically to form a right angle here, I've got my angle of 15 at the centre here. I'm going to label that X. At the moment, X is 15. And the opposite side is this length. I'm going to graph that. So my angle X is represented on my X axis. The opposite side length, it's going to label that with op, is represented on my Y axis. So at 15 degrees, I'm going to trace across, and I'm going to do this very faintly in pencil, and I'm going to go up from 15 degrees. So the opposite side length is approximately 0 0.2. I'm then going to repeat that for 30 degrees and then 45 degrees and so on. 
So at 30 degrees, my triangle is now this size. The angle X is still at the middle and the opposite side has got longer. So initially, as we increase the angle X, the opposite side gets longer. If I go across and I make that pretty much exactly on 30 degrees, an angle sorry, angle of 30 degrees, and that is opposite side length of 0.5. So next, I'm going to go to 45 degrees. Here. Okay, let's double check that. 45 degrees, yes, I'm glad I double checked that because I've just messed that one up. 45 degrees is here. Triangle is now here. And again, we would go across from the opposite side length and we would put that on the graph. Okay, so that was 45 degrees up to here. Okay, and so on. I'm going to keep going. And what we'll find is that when the angle here goes part goes to 90 degrees, so if x was 90, the triangle has pretty well it's disappeared, hasn't it? The triangle. The opposite is now the same as the hypotenuse which is 1. So at 90 degrees it would be 1 and as we increase the angle further the size of the opposite side if for example this triangle is now going to start to go down again. Okay. When we go beyond 180 degrees so for example here the opposite side is now going below the x-axis so we're going to have negatives. Once you've gone on and you have completed all of your points you should be able to join them with a nice smooth curve and next session I will be explaining to you or demonstrating how this introduces a whole concept of one of the trigonometric functions. So you may have heard the words tan, sin, cos or sine and cosine. Okay, You might even have heard the expression Sokotoa. I'm going to use this next time and your graphs that you're going to produce to explain where it all comes from. Now, when I did this on Zoom earlier, it was um, it was quite quite hard. It's quite a hard lesson to deliver inside a classroom and to understand, but it is really, really valuable. So it's worth persevering with. Um, hopefully on YouTube, it will work better than on Zoom because you can pause, rewind, fast forward and so on. OK, the one thing I didn't do on the Zoom lesson or in the Zoom lesson is look at how look at how we could graph the adjacent side. So on these, if we look at our first triangle where we did 15 degrees, here, the opposite side we've graphed, the adjacent side, the side that is running adjacent to the angle, I'm measuring now about 3.8 centimetres according to my scale. So at 15 degrees, at 15 degrees, sorry, I'm being interrupted by a cat here. Just want to, do you want to make an appearance on YouTube, marbles? I'm trying to crawl across my screen. Look, say hello to marbles. Right, bye bye, marbles. So, I said, what did I say? 3.8, didn't I? So, at 15 degrees, the adjacent side was 3.8. So, I'm going to measure up to 3.8 and put across here. At 30 degrees, that's this triangle, I make that about 3.4, 3.5, so again I would go up here, so at 30 degrees, if it's a unit hypotenuse, you would estimate at 30 degrees that's about 0.85, 0.9, okay, I'll do one more with you, so at 45 degrees, I've got 2.8, so if I measure that up, that would be there. Okay, 
So you can now carry on with these graphs. And when you've done them, when you've plotted all the points, join the points with a nice smooth curve. So here, if the angle is zero, there is no opposite side, so I'm starting at zero. And I can do a nice smooth curve that will go through my points and I can carry on my curve. Okay. Now we can use that curve to estimate the length of the opposite side for any angle. So I might, for example, ask you to estimate the opposite side length when the angle is 50 degrees and we're sticking with a hypotenuse of one unit. So to do that, I would go across to 50, so that's 45, 50 is going to be about there. I would go up to the line, and across, and I would, I make that approximately, so the opposite is approximately equal to, what do you reckon, about 0.6. So once you've done that, I did give the class some questions earlier. I'm just going to slide those onto the screen. So could you please use your graphs to answer those questions? I've just realised I've given one of the answers to you. Um, I've also asked you to go back and answer those questions using the graph for the adjacent side, which I haven't labelled my y-axis, have I? OK, so you can use your graphs to estimate those. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to run a lesson where I will show you my completed graph and we will start using those to introduce the more formal terms that we use in trigonometry, such as sine, cosine, the expression Sokotoa and all the rest of it. So I hope that made some sort of sense to you and um, I have just noticed in editing that um, you may have spotted this. On the first graph for the opposite side, the y-axis wasn't actually labelled. It was labelled, I just had my camera positioned so that you couldn't see it. So please accept my apologies for that. Um, I will hopefully see you on Tuesday in the Zoom lesson. Um, and just hoping that you and your family stay well, stay safe and... Um, Take care. Thank you very much. Goodbye.